Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about normalization, which is the process of efficiently organizing data in a database. All this time, all we were doing how to, we were learning how to uh, represent data first, like like a blueprint or something, before going and working towards the actual database. It's like laying out a plan. Right now, we're going to be focusing on making the database more efficient and uh, less space consuming. All right, so the first ultimate, the first goal of a normalization is to eliminate redundant data. And uh, the second is to ensure that data dependencies have only related data stored in the table. Like there aren't any unnecessary information stored in the table or repeated information stored in the table twice or thrice or uh, any number of times. All right, so these are the two definitions that you have to uh, like keep in mind a little bit while we are uh, discussing about this. Prime attribute, a prime attribute must be a member of some candidate key. Means a prime attribute is essentially just any sort of key, be it a candidate key, primary key, super key, any sort of key. And a non-prime attribute is not a prime attribute. That is, it is the opposite of a prime attribute. That means it's not uh, any sort of key. It's just a normal attribute. All right. So there are, there are three kinds of normalization that we're going to be discussing about. There are more than these, but for now, we're just going to be, since this is a basic understanding of database systems, we're just going to be discussing about 1NF, 2NF, 3NF only. All right. So the first rule about 1NF is that, first normalization is that there has to be no duplicate rows in the table. Also, each cell has to be single valued or, as they say, atomic atomic values oh sorry about the spelling error so the values have to be atomic what that means is that some attributes have multi-valued attributes some attributes are multi-valued attributes or composite attributes right so uh, you have to like the first some rule of normalization is to separate out the values that are multi-valued like you can't just put one field cannot have more than one values it has to have just one atomic value so it does not allow multi-valued at or composite attributes. So this is the first thumb rule. The second, uh, the second normalization is that the first, uh, like it has to be in the first normalization form, and like it has to satisfy one NF first, and then all the all the non-prime attributes have to be fully functionally dependent on the key. So what fully functionally dependent on the key means is that. The key has to be the determinant of all the non-prime attributes. The non-prime attributes are the ones that are non that are not a key, that are just normal attributes that do not uni uniquely identify any row or tuples. So all the non-prime attributes have to be fully functional dependent on on uh, what you call the uh, the primary key or the key. All right. The third normalization rule is that a table has to be in uh, 2NF first, and it cannot have transitive dependencies. Okay, so what's a transitive de dependency? A transitive dependency is something like if X determines Y and Y determines Z, then X essentially determines Z. So uh, it, this this thing cannot be accepted in a third normalization form because this is a transitive dependency. So it disallows transitive dependencies in a table. We'll come back into that while doing the examples. Then you'll understand what 3NF essentially means. But I hope you understood 1NF and 2NF first. So at first, if if it, uh, 1NF has to satisfy atomic, has to all the attributes have all the values have to be atomic. Second, uh, 2NF has to satisfy 1NF first, and then all the non-key has to be dependent on the key attributes, and 3NF has disallows transitive dependence, and it has to be 2NF first. All right. Also, one note about 3NF is that in if X determines Y and Y determines Z, with X as the primary key, we consider this a problem only if Y is not a candidate key. If X is a, uh, uh, what you call, if Y is a candidate key, means if it's some sort of a key, then there is no problem with the transitive dependency and it is is it is essentially in 3NF. But if Y, the, the Y attribute is not a candidate key, it is a normal non-prime attribute, then it, ha it has to be separated out by 3NF normalization and, uh, uh, and it has to satisfy the rule of uh, disallowing uh, transitive dependencies. Like for example, this 
if SSN determines employee number and employee number determines salary, then this is 3 in 3NF form. Even though this is transitive, but this is still in 3NF form because SSN is X and employee number is Y and Y determines Z, salary is Z. And since Y is a candidate key, this is not a problem. But if Y was a non like a non prime attribute, then this would have been a problem, and you would have to apply three NF normalization and separate these tables out. So here, like like I said, SSN determines employee number, employee number determines salary, and employee number is a candidate key. So this this table is acceptable and does not have to be applied three NF normalization on. So let's look at some examples. Like I said, 1NF allows only uh, multivalent, uh, or sorry, atomic attributes. So as you can see, atomic value. So as you can see, like in the first row, biology and math, these are two two values in one in one uh, row, sorry, in one column of a table. So this is not this is not allowed according to 1NF rules. So we separate them out and put them in a separate table. So Adam 15 will be written twice, but with the subject the same, uh, but uh, it's separated out. So this is just 1NF, this is like a simple form, and this is essentially how you apply 1NF normalization. The second uh, second normalization rule is that if there are one, if there is one primary key and um, uh, all the non-prime attributes are not fully functionally depend on the one on the primary key, then you have to separate them out. For example, as you can see in this table, SSN and P number determines hours, but P number only determines p name and p location and ssn only determines e name so what this means is that ssn and p number is the primary key all right so ours e name p name p location the other non prime attributes have to be fully functional dependent on ssn and p numbers this is the primary key to satisfy 2nf normalization but since all of these non-prime attributes are not fully functionally dependent on the prime attribute. We have to separate the ones that are dependent on the keys. So after 2NF normalization, SSN and P number determines hours. That's fine because these this primary key determines these non-prime attributes. SSN determines E name. So this is a key primary key of this table. In this table, the primary key is SSN. So this uh, uh, 2NF normalization is satisfied because, like as as it, as it states that. The primary key function determines the non-prime attributes. Also here, after separating it out, P number is the primary key in this table, in this separate table. So that's why it also satisfied 2NF because uh, the primary key satisfies the, uh, the primary key determines the, uh, function determines the non-prime attributes. So this is also satisfied. So in one table, all the primary key attributes have to be, all the non-prime key, non-prime attributes have to be fully functional depending on the primary, on the primary key. So after separating out, this is possible. But without separating, some are functionally dependent and some are not. That's why the we had to separate them out with 2NF normalization. Now with 3NF, uh, 3NF normalization states uh, like you have to be in 2NF form also, and there can be no transitive dependencies. In this table, student ID is a primary key, but street, city, and state depends upon zip. But zip is not a key. Zip is not any sort of key. The dependency between zip and the other fields is transitive dependency. Hence, we have to separate this table out. If zip, if zip code was a primary or a, some key attribute, maybe a candidate key or something, if it was any sort of key, then we wouldn't have to uh, separate these out. But since zip is a key attribute, like uh, is not a key attribute, we are having to separate this out. And in this table, zip becomes a key attribute. In this one table, only student ID is the key attribute. But in this table, in uh, zip is the one key attribute. In this table, uh, student ID is a key attribute. I know this might be confusing, but now we're going to be solving a problem to clarify this further. All right. The question says that in the car sale, this is, this is the, these are the fields given. Assume that the car may be sold by multiple salesmen, and hence car and salesman is the, these together form the primary key. Additional dependencies are car number determines date sold, car number determines uh, discount amount, uh, date sold determines uh, the commission, uh, the discount amount, and sales number determines the commission percentage. Now, 
uh, as mentioned above, the car, uh, car number, we, the first step, if the primary key is not given, but since it's given in this question, the first step would be to determine the primary key. Because from there, we'll move forward and we can do the 2NF and 3NF normalization. As you can see, it is, uh, this relation is in 1NF because all the key attribute, all the attributes are single and atomic values. So let's write this down. Satisfies 1NF because all values are non are sorry are single are single atomic values all right so now the relation is not in 2nf because car number determines date sold fine car number determines discount amount fine but sales number determines commission and as mentioned before the primary key is car number and salesman right so thus these key attributes are not fully functionally dependent on the primary key like they are they are half partially dependent like the, the date sold and discount number dependent on car car number and uh, commission percentage is dependent on sales number salesman number but all of the uh, non prime attributes have to be fully functional dependent on car number and salesman together in order to be to in order to satisfy 2nf normalization so how do we satisfy this we can just separate them out like uh, we have to separate them out in such a way that each table has a primary at primary key attribute which functionally determines the non prime key attributes so let's put car number like for the table table number 1 let's write down for after 2 and f for table 1 we get car number date sold discount amount that's it because car number determines only date sold and discount amount now uh, this we don't need to put in a separate table because as I said every table needs to have a, a primary key so that all the non prime key attributes are function depend on the primary key so as in this table primary key is car number so date sold and discount amount are dependent on car number so for table for table 2 we have salesman number salesman number and commission percentage all right now for table three, we need to have the primary key attributes because this is the only way that table one and table two would be joined, would be related together. Like these two tables still need to have a relationship with each other because uh, initially this was supposed to be the relation name, car sale. This is supposed to be the whole table. But since we separated them out, we need to have some sort of a relation between these two tables somehow so we just list all the primary key and like we used to do in this we used to do in schema diagram i hope you remember this in schema diagram while we had some two two entities here and they were related there was one way is that one way we could relate them is that uh, like uh, make a separate relation with the primary key of the one entity and the primary key of the other entity and form a separate relation with that in order to relate them together so this is how 2nf normalization is done for this now let's see if this is in 3nf normalization in 3nf what this would do is car say car number determines discount date sold and date sold determines discount amount this was not given this i had to find it out in the exam paper this would not be mentioned if it was then you could definitely easily identify and do the solve the problem but you have to see a relation in such a way like all these dependencies are given you have to find a dependency that that shows signs of a transitive dependency now as you can see car number determines date sold and date sold determines discount amount this is like a transitive dependency because a below a determines b and b determines c so this is not in 3nf why because if date sold was sort of a candidate key any any kind of key uh, like a candidate key a prime attribute then we did, we wouldn't need to separate them out or nothing like this would have been uh, like enough this up to this the table would have been enough to satisfy our needs but like we would just call it 3nf normalization that yes 
this table satisfies 3, 3NF normalization, this table, as in I'm talking on this table. But since uh, like uh, date sold is not a, a key attribute, it's just a non-prime attribute, we have to separate them out and do and apply 3NF normalization. After 3NF, after 3NF, we get, so we get one table, table one, we get a uh, car number determines date sold, car number and date sold. We put this in one table, we separate them out and we separate date sold, date sold and discount amount. Uh, this is table two. And table three would be, uh, table three would be salesman number and commission like as before. Salesman number and commission percentage and table four would be the relation that we formed before, which is this. Because like I said, we have to somehow relate all these tables together. And this is the only way we could actually do that. If you want to relate three and four, we could relate it because these two are common values. If you want to, uh, if we want to relate this and table two and three, then we could do so with the help of this table. If you want to relate table two and one, we could do this because date sold and date sold are common attributes. All right, now for this to be more uh, precise, we have to underline the key attributes because only then we can understand that these are the primary key. These are the primary key of this uh, table. Um, this is, I guess, underlined. Let's just ignore. Yeah. So here also, these are the primary key. This, this becomes a primary key because we have to somehow, like I said, the transitive dependency is only satisfied. Uh, the 3NF, 3NF normalization is only satisfied if, wait, just, yeah. Okay, the 3NF normalization is only satisfied on its own without solving without doing any normalization only if the in the transitive dependency the the value on the right hand side that means when a determines b and b determines c then from there if b is a prime attribute then we wouldn't need to apply 3nf normalization it would on its own uh, satisfy 3nf normalization but since uh, the B, as, as in date sold, is not a prime attribute. It's a, just a non-prime attribute. That time we would have to uh, do uh, apply 3NF normalization. So I hope you understood uh, normalization concepts. This is like a basic concept. I hope you can solve questions like these if they come. And please like and subscribe if you, if you want more CS tutorials. And good luck.